Hey there, you need to meet Ferris because in just three months, Ferris Cobbles closed three deals with new clients using cold outreach. Now he says that the key was the way that he chooses to open conversations, effective communication skills. Whether he's using email, LinkedIn DMs or calls, he is breaking through, then he's qualifying, and then he's getting those deals closed. Now, the ugly truth is that your potential customers are probably a lot like Ferris's. They are drowning in spam and of course, drowning in annoying calls. And here is the important part. The competitors and people who are calling your prospects tend to all sound the same. That's because most of us are copying the same shitty templates that everybody uses. And customers are very good at spotting these patterns. So today I'm going to share three changes that Ferris made to his outreach to break through and close these three deals. Now, this is what Ferris is doing differently, strategically to get conversations started with prospects. Now, whether it's on cold calls, how he writes emails or LinkedIn DMs, doesn't matter. This applies to all outreach tactics. Step one for Ferris was to stop doing what everybody else was doing basically, which is persuading. Yes, people are copycatting templates and scripts that all tend to sound the same, but the foundation of these copycat templates is almost always persuasion. So Ferris committed to shifting his mindset to stop persuading and instead attract conversations. So instead of persuading, he's actually provoking customers curiosity because persuasion tends to sound the same these days, but also because it tends to push people away. So Ferris was telling me that the key he believes is to help people almost start persuading themselves. Now, if you want my full explanation on why this is actually very true and usually works very well, click the link in the description below and watch the video on why to avoid persuasion. Whether it's a current customer on the phone or a new one in a cold email, Ferris realized no curiosity, no conversation, <laughs> especially in my saturated industry where the sales cycle tends to be long and most clients already have a supplier, he told me. So Ferris took some time off, he got his head straight and he changed absolutely everything. Ferris stopped doing what his competitors were doing. And instead, he put curiosity at the very center of his entire business. He literally refreshed all of his website copy, then his case study copy, then his LinkedIn profile, and then he changed his Twitter and his blogging strategy. Can you believe it? He even updated how he interacts with current customers on the phone and Zooms in person, whatever. His entire business strategy shifted away from persuasion and more toward curiosity. Helping people get curious was allowing him to then put them on the path of convincing themselves to engage. One deal closed with cold email. Ferris told me, I met the brand on LinkedIn, we DM'd, and then they suggested a call. And I sent a custom voicemail and a personalized email. His second deal closed with pure cold email for an interim CMO contract at a startup. Now this contract would eventually turn into recurring engagements for a strategic and tactical advertising, buying and marketing support. Ferris said that the client mentioned his LinkedIn profile and how he had restructured the copy in his bio and how that helped draw the client in with, that's right, curiosity. His cold outreach email was a strong, what Ferris calls poke the bear type of provocation where Ferris asked if the prospect trusted their current strategy to deliver the results needed. Now, rather than call the lead, he enticed the lead to actually call him using a curiosity focused voicemail that was attached to an email. Now, if you'd like to hear more about this specific kind of provocation, do leave a comment below or you can shoot me an email. Now, the third deal came from Ferris's curiosity sparking website and LinkedIn posts.
Ferris told me that he would not have closed these deals without first getting rid of his limited beliefs. Yep, stinking thinking and overthinking, second guessing his good instincts. Basically, effective communication skills are great, but Ferris had to commit to stop believing in his old beliefs and start believing that, for example, he was not going to anger people using his poke the bear tactic when he was reaching out to them. He also committed to not overanalyzing his scripts and his email copy. He further committed to stop believing that social media is just way too saturated to break through all the noise. Now, of course, let's face it, social media like LinkedIn or Facebook, these platforms are extremely saturated. However, they are saturated with low quality messages coming from sellers with low quality communication skills. Too much persuasion. So Ferris simply stopped persuading. Finally, Ferris stopped believing that customized voicemails are too creepy. Can you believe it? Yeah, that's actually what he believed and I can understand. So instead, he chose to see customized voicemails in a more positive light. And he styled those voicemails to be provocative rather than persuasive. So instead, Ferris focused on believing that he could confidently make cold calls and leave voicemails, effective voicemails. Now, he did this in a really cool way by allowing his failures to inform his other written outreach tactics on LinkedIn and email. I just love that. If a message failed with calling, he learned and then he applied what he learned. He used his cold calling failures almost like you would use market research to create more engaging email and LinkedIn messaging. Now, Ferris also said to me, I also credit radical self-belief, lots of mindfulness and meditation and prayer. Also, relentless following up and creating a pipeline. Man, Ferris, 100%. Mental health is so important in sales and in life. Ferris says for him, it was a real paradigm shift. So for example, he has now made it a habit to avoid using the word wrong with himself. I just love that and avoid making generalizations. He said to me, this is an effective way to kind of prime your subconscious and avoid closing off possibilities to basically kind of think outside the box on a regular basis. He then upped his commitment by investing and participating heavily in an online community of sales reps and small business owners just like him who are focusing on improving their communication skills. Now, I'm proud to say that he joined the Spark Selling Academy. Now, you should consider it too. Consider reinventing how you think about sales outreach and persuasive communication strategies with us. Getting back to Ferris, he started practicing, not just learning skills, but also becoming uncomfortable on a regular basis so that he could make positive change happen, not because of the academy or me, but because of himself. Can you believe it?